Hey guys, what's going on? We are in Panama City and I'm actually here with my family on a fishing trip and we're staying at this house on the water and we brought this blue crab trap with us just in case that there was a chance of catching crabs off the dock and the second we got here we saw crabs in the water so we knew we we're gonna have some good luck with the crabbing but if you guys have watched my videos before I used to go blue crabbing with my grandma she loved doing that and this was actually her trap and this is the first time that we're using it and look at this we got some crabs for dinner already so I hope you guys enjoy the crabbing part of this video then I'll clean them up for you and then we're actually gonna bring these crabs home to Pompano Beach to cook them up so I hope you enjoy. So we just got back from a fishing trip and we have a bunch of fish that we're gonna fillet up tomorrow. But Victor is taking out the guts right now. He's mm -hmm. gutting them and we're gonna put the guts Which in, is the, this stuff? in the crab traps. And then, but, and then once we fillet the fish, we'll have even more fish to put in the traps. But for now, we're just gonna put it in the stomachs. But basically we got what? Four, four nights to let those traps soak in. One of the crab shops already has a crab in it. Yeah, look. Let's go. Look, there's a crab right there. Right there. If I had a, a line, I could catch him. What? He got out and there's a smaller one in there. Right? He was big. Had, no, that's not the trap that had one. Yes, it is. Isn't this the trap that had one? I think so. Well, he got out and now there's a small one in there. We got fresh guts. Mmm, fresh guts. Pour it just in there. <laughs> so it's the next day. We just filleted some fish. Now Brookie's gonna go check the first trap. We just got back from an all day fishing adventure again today. And we're gonna check the trap that we had put in two of the red snapper carcasses from yesterday. I see one crab. Oh, that's a good one. It's a female. And the eggs. There's another one. There's two. There's two crabs. They're a little small, aren't they, Dad? Um, I mean, we could we could eat them if you know we only catch enough for a dinner. They, they'd be all right. Should I leave them in there? Or take yeah, them out? Yeah, leave them in there. They got plenty of food. Let's put another carcass in there. Another fresh carcass. You think the fish or the crabs could be eating from the edge? Yeah, I do. I do. I was surprised that you had it like this. Well, Look how at how much. Because they don't have to go in. They could just go right here and eat. Mm -hmm. You know? Words from the wise man. <laughs> yeah, but how I can't fit the bait in that center you thing. You have to cut small pieces. We don't we don't need a big bait, we just need just bait. I mean the crabs are clearly here. We want to maximize our chances of getting them, huh? So should we take out the big carcasses? I yeah. think so. And just fill that little thing? I well, think where are you so. gonna put the carcass? You don't want to throw it in the water, why otherwise not? The, cra the crabs will just go to the carcass then. That's why I put them in there, because then I figured they would just eat. Unless you toss there. them like way over there or something. No, let's draw them to the area. I'll tell you what, they already did some work on this. Yeah, they did. Look at that. That's not even 24 hours yet. It's the best fire in the game right there. A little crab. Okay. These now, things here, I would close up just a little bit. You see how big that is? They can swim back out of there. Their, their bodies are skinny, so you want this to be kind of skinny, like that. Otherwise, they can find their way out too easy. So we'll take this one and do the same thing. See, it's much bigger than it needs to be for them to get in. So we're going to pinch that shut a little bit. Keep them in there. So Victor just filleted up a big, giant mangrove There's snapper. Here's some of the bloodlines. How about the skin? There ain't much on there, is there? No, but it's got some smell. Okay. Right? I think you could put more good meat in there. Well, I don't have good meat to give them. Well, I mean, you got... I can gut it. 
Wow, that's a big one. That's a monster. Yeah. How did you open this one? Uh, that's a good question. Oh, there's two. One there, one there. Oh. Ow, ow. He got you? He almost got me. He's too big. I don't want to chance it. You got it? Uh huh. <laughs> Teamwork. <laughs> Look, he doesn't want to let go of the skin. Somebody hold him up. Hold him up. He's a pretty big one. Yeah, he's good. That's a good size one. And it's a male. Nice. This trap has had multiple crabs in it. But it's got holes in it. It's got holes in it. So they keep escaping. So this time we saw this giant one in here. We we're like, oh, we got to take him out this time. And I think we're going to put him in the trap that we brought that has no holes in it. So that way he won't get out. But he'll still stay fresh and alive in the water. Just really want to hold it in. You don't think those will get out? No. Are you sure? No. Alright, well we got three smaller ones in this trap. Fisher, you want to help us put it back? If he gets out of there, I'll be so sad. A real one? That's a real one. It's a redfish. That's a real one. I like the sound of that. I could, um. I, I don't could, like fake fish. I could, <laughs> oh, no, don't film it. It's a catfish. It's a catfish. Yeah, don't film it. Well, 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 hold on. Two minutes ago, it was a real one. What uh, happened? It, it was pulling real nice, so I thought I had something decent, but no. No, not catfish. <laughs> They're worth no points at all. That's negative points. See, <laughs> yeah, that's negative points. Now I gotta catch two good ones. Beer in hand, in the water. Got himself a crab for dinner. There you go, Jed. Uh, hopefully we get enough for a meal. Man, he's really grabbing on, huh? Yeah, he's... He's all tangled up. Look who! There's one more closer to dinner. Well, we got a little pile of crabs going, huh? Hopefully none of them escape out of this trap. As we've been catching crabs, we've been putting in them all in this trap, just in case to make sure we get enough for dinner. So we should have six. If there's more than six, then that means we caught another. Still got six though. All right guys, so I caught a female so there is no law against keeping fem female crabs, and there's also no size limit on crabs, but we prefer to let the females go. They got those red tips on their claws, and if I could flip them over, oh, there it goes, it's gonna run so good. You can see that their bottom is different. You see that? They got a place where they can hold the eggs. I forget what that's called. Do you remember what that's called, Vic? No. We're gonna oh, let no. her go. So it's just a sportsman thing to do? Yeah, it's sportsman-like. Let it keep going, you know? All right, I just saw this guy on the piling and I was like, Victor, grab the net, but go slowly so he doesn't get scared on the piling. And I reached the net down on the piling and I scooped him up real quick, but this is a nice big male. And we have um, six in the trap and we're probably, oh, I guess we need one for Gabby too, don't we? <laughs> so I guess we kind of need seven crabs. But we were gonna let the female go. We were like, oh, we need one more. So we got our another male. This is a male. We wanna keep all the males. We usually don't like keeping females. Look. Holy moly, that's a nice one. 
it was on the piling over there and I go, Victor, there's a giant crab on the piling. Bring me the net, but go slow. <laughs> and I just put the net in like really slow on the piling and then I just went whoosh, real fast. You've always been good at that. And I got him. You've <laughs> always been good at judging just how to handle a net to, to get things. I've noticed that about you. So let's take these crabs out of here and put them in the bucket. This might be the biggest one of all. I don't know, there's a couple other big ones. You know what I say? Now that we got this big one, get rid of the female. Let's let the female go. Yeah, I think so too. All right, guys. So we're gonna attempt to take all these out and separate the female one, and then the hope is I can actually probably she's just sitting here. Oh, wait, wait, she's in there. Wait, look, can I take her out? Is it this one or that one? Hey, hey, Watch hey. Watch out. I just want to get you out so I can let you go. Stop being mean. Just put it on the dock. All right. So this is a female. She's got those red tips. This is where they hold their eggs right here underneath their shell. And the males look different. So that's how you can tell the difference between a male and a female. But I'm going to let her go. I think she's also the smallest one. And we just don't want to keep the females, so. See ya. <laughs> like I said, we brought this trap and the other traps that are here have some holes in them. So this is definitely the best chance of catching more for dinner. So we took those ones out and hopefully now we'll catch more. We're about to flay up some more fish and rebait this one. So hopefully we have some more luck since they're not in there. Maybe that kind of scares the other crabs knowing that the other ones are in there. That literally is a crab eating the thing we just threw in there. You see that? We need to rebait this and we'll catch that one down there. You That's see that? A female? That's a big one. No, the female swim was mm. over there. Look at it. Yeah. Literally that old skin that I just told my dad to throw in because it was gross. <laughs> <laughs> the crab is grabbing it and carrying it away. Yeah, that's a good one too. We got to get him. All right, we need to flay up some more fish and get yeah. some new bait in here. I said I couldn't remember what that thing was called on the back of the crab to determine whether it was male or female. And it's called the apron. So <laughs> there you go, it's called the apron. So the apron of the female and the male is different and the female apron is where she carries her eggs. Well, we're gonna ice them down and that'll slow slow them right down so we can handle them without getting bit. So that we can clean them. Yeah. This big carcass was from a giant red grouper. And look at how there's like barely anything left of that. Look at how well they ate everything off that skeleton. There's lots of pinfish eating at it. And then the crabs come in. Look, here comes a little crab right now. But that one's very small. Right there, you see him? Oh, he's running away. Here he comes. Coming to get a bite. Oh. Retreat, retreat. So that giant one that I was just talking about is in the trap now. I can see him in there. So we're going to pull him up and get him. That's how clear the water is that you can literally just see the crabs when they're in the trap. At least in this area because it's a little bit shallower. The ones over there you actually have to pull up to see if you can see anything in there. Haha, <laughs> we got you! Yes! <laughs> That's him, huh? We we just literally took them out, what, not even 10 minutes ago? That's what we get for letting the uh, small female go. Huh? That's good karma. Good karma. And look, <laughs> look what we replaced it with. Look at that. We got rid the, of that small a one. Monster. Now that one, that one actually is a monster can you get a good shot of the face of this thing victor look at the size of his claws i think you should hold them that's a beast of a crab <laughs> we got him we haven't even flayed any more fish yet and look we haven't even finished cleaning them yet and we already got another Brooke thinks this is a six and a half inch point to point. I say eight. Oh, she's closer than me. It's seven. 
seven inches from point to point. We got another big one in here too. Let me, let me check that one. So we got a seven. Another seven. But uh -huh. his point is broken a little bit. Yeah, so we got two sevens. Those are those are nice, nice crabs. Are they ready to be cleaned? Oh yet? yeah. Should we do, do it? Okay, you want to show us how? Look at these nice size blue claws. Man, that's a beauty. Okay. First thing I like to do is to take their own claw and kind of get this thing. Oh, it's not working. Let me try this. There, I hadn't done it in a long time. My mom used to do it. I haven't cleaned crabs in a while. So once, you, once I loosen that, then I can take this and pull and pull that shell right off. Throw that in the water. Pull off the gills. I've heard them called lady fingers too. Pull those off. Rip the other gills off. These are nice and clean looking too. Their, their gills look clean. Their insides look clean. Okay. So, I'll clean that out in the bucket because we don't have a hose up here. Now I know you people in Maryland are expert blue claw crab eaters. You're probably laughing at me right now because they don't, they don't clean their crabs like this. They steam them whole and put delicious seasonings on them and they're fantastic but this is this is just the way i've been raised doing it and we um we clean them and then you've seen us cook them in a sauce and they're fantastic that way too so there's one nice clean one i don't even see the crab that was in this one anymore did we pull this one? There was one crab in it, but now I feel like I don't see him anymore. And he looked like he would have been big enough. I think we waited too long, Dad. I don't he got out? I think. No, he's probably hiding. He's not in there anymore. We have lost some good crabs that have been in this red trap here. The holes are just too big, so once they get in and they eat and then they're full and they're ready to get out, they find their way out. So. We can't sleep on leaving them in there. The second we see them in there, we gotta get them out. You kinda get this mindset where you're like, why would the crab wanna leave the trap? There's so much food in here. He's not gonna wanna leave. I'll just leave him in there and get him in a little bit. But you leave him in there, he gets full, and then he's ready to leave, and he just escapes. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Pompano Beach. So we are back home at my parents' kitchen and tonight we are cooking up the blue crabs that we caught in Panama City. And since we don't have that many crabs, we are also cooking some king crab that we had in the freezer from my birthday slash Father's Day. So, Dad, you wanna tell them what recipe we're doing tonight? Well, we're gonna do our, our normal blue claw recipe with um, you know marinara tomato sauce and lots of tomato and onions and garlic and throw some other seasonings in there and just make this terrific sauce that gets flavored by these blue claws. And then that on top of the linguine is just delicious. All right, Dad, you wanna tell us what you're doing first? Well, I break these, um, these giant Alaskan king crab legs right at the joint because otherwise they won't fit in my pot. So this way they fit in the pot nice. And then I like to take a knife to make it easy for people to eat them, I run a knife right down the whole length of the leg, and then there's no fighting with it. It's easy to eat, plus the juices from my sauce get in there too. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of my pan. I'm gonna huh? see how long. You, you film it? Yeah, but you gotta do your onions first. Otherwise, the your garlic will burn. Oh, really? Yes. We're gonna 
say I want to see how long it takes so Victor says something. You ready? Because it already oh. happened. I want to see how long I can actually cook before Victor pushes me out of the way. He thinks this is his kitchen and he rules. And uh, he's better cooked than me, so I kind of like to listen to, me, to him. But I wanted to do this one on my own, but I don't know how long it's going to last. We'll see. You didn't want all of them? No, I'm just in. Why? You're out. <laughs> Over here in this pan, we got our onions starting in some olive oil. We're going to let those cook down for a while. And then we're going to add some garlic. All right, so Victor's finally going to let me put my garlic in now. See how it is? See how it is here? Parsley. I want to add a little beer to my cool, cool things off a little bit. Save a little for the cook. Oh yeah, smelling good. Oh yeah. Do you want to talk about where this recipe is from? Oh, well, we used to do this in New Jersey. And, um, you know, I'm sure I, I didn't remember the whole recipe, so it was kind of trial and error. My brother would give me hints of ingredients he liked. My other brother would give me hints of ingredients that he liked. My mom would put her two cents in, and I'd always put my two cents in, and it always tastes delicious. I'm just going to add a little bit of cayenne pepper. Not too much. I don't want to, you know, ruin it for people that don't like spice, but just a little bit. I get these at a local Italian place where I, where I get my uh, marinara sauce and some of my sauces. It, it's it's good looking stuff. And I always like to take these whole tomatoes and kind of squeeze them in my hand. It's fun. You can buy them already done, but this is more fun. <laughs> so my birthday was last weekend and then the day after my birthday was Father's Day. So we did a white wine sauce for the king crab. And we were discussing when was the last time we made a red sauce for king crab because we always make like a white sauce for that and then the red sauce for blue crabs. So this might be the first time in quite some time that we're doing a red sauce with king crab, but I'm sure it's gonna be absolutely delicious. Brooke said um, last weekend, Saturday was her birthday and Sunday was Father's Day, but Brooke was actually born on Father's Day. So that was kind of a special Father's Day for me. Real special. These are more of the same tomatoes? No, she got a different different name. But they're still peeled tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah, they're still the same like that. And I'm gonna add a lot of water too to get that volume so I can get all my crabs in my sauce. This was in the refrigerator, so I'm going to put one at a time in there so I don't totally stop the cooking process all at once. So I'll add one of these. Tell us what it is. This is a marinara sauce from Belmontes. They make it homemade, and I've always liked the flavor of it. The Belmonte is just a local Italian deli that um, makes a bunch of different stuff, but that's where the sauce comes from. Getting nice, huh? I let my sauce come back to a boil. I'm pouring that first cold marinara in. Now I'm gonna add the second one. All right guys, while we're waiting for the sauce to get ready to put our crabs in, I'm going to do a little self-promotion for myself. You guys see us do sponsored videos. And today's video is, let's say, self-sponsored by myself. So I make these lobster nets and tickle sticks. You guys have seen us use them in a lot of videos. I hand make every single one and we are one month away from lobster mini season. I know a lot of you guys come down here or even live down here already and you participate in lobster mini season as well as lobster season starts a week after mini season. So make sure you guys are ready for this year's season. If you're in interested in a net or a tickle stick, you need a tickle stick to get the lobster out of the rock and then you use the net to catch your lobster. So you need a tickle stick and a net to go hand in hand with each other and they got matching blue handles, and like I said, 
I make them handmade. We've been using these nets for 10 years. They work absolutely great. I will have all the information for these linked down in the description, floridalobsternets.com, as well as one more thing that um, Victor and my dad are both actually wearing tonight is I just launched t-shirts. So this is the Florida Lobster Net Co. My first shirt that I've ever had before. I designed this lobster tail. I didn't actually make them, but this was my idea. And um, a kid in Jupiter, a local artist, actually drew these for me. So these will also be linked down in the description. If you guys want to support me, um, floridalobsternets.com. She works really hard on these nets. She said that she hand makes them as she does, but it's a lot of hard work. She builds them on the patio there, and it's like 90 degrees <laughs> working with this heat thing. So th they work awesome. She works hard at it, and the shirt for mini season just gets you in the right frame of mind to chase tails. So all three items go well together. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Here you go. Yay. Presents. <laughs> oh, Jeff's got one too. Get yeah, a buddy. <laughs> oh, Mom, where's yours? <laughs> In the closet. <laughs> I wanted to wear something red. This is not the right video to be wearing a white shirt in, though, <laughs> while you're eating crabs with red sauce. <laughs> All right, so our sauce is ready to go, and the first round that we're going to do is the blue crabs, and then after we eat all the blue crabs, then we're gonna move on to the king crab, and how many rounds of king crab do we have done? Um, probably two rounds of king crab, and one round of blue claws, so we're gonna eat the blue claws first. They're a little, you know, harder to get the meat out, so. But the ones we got in Panama City, they were nice size. I mean, look at those, look at those things. They're, they're beauties. And they were fun, fun to catch too. We had a lot of fun doing that. So we're gonna push these down in there and just let them go, let the sauce get into the shells and these are gonna turn bright red. And that's why you wanna add water until you have enough liquid because you want to be able to completely cover your crabs. How long do you think they've been in for? Um, I didn't time them. Ooh no. baby, look at that. They're them. all nice and red. I love this seasoning, this J.O. seasoning. It's awesome. What's it, what's it really called? What no, do you it's, like it's to call called? I like to what call it like Joe. I call it JoJo. I have nicknames for everything. My family knows what I'm talking about when I speak, but on camera, <laughs> on camera, if you name something, you know, your stupid little slang, people will be like, "What the heck?" But I call it JoJo just for fun, but it's J-O and it's delicious. Look at how good these look. Oh yeah, baby. We haven't had blue crabs in quite some time and I'm very excited for this. These are uh, the two smallest ones, so whoever gets that gets two. Yep. This is the goods here. Mm. Oh, look at this one. Look at this one. Look at that. It hardly fits on the plate. Wow. That's a nice blue claw there. Because these aren't small plates. This is just our first round of, of Alaskans. Look at that. Look at that claw. Gone in the sauce. So we have our second serving in the pot cooking while we uh, take our time and eat those first crabs. The big Alaskan king crabs, as you'll see in the next you know, serving, are much easier to eat. You get a lot of meat easier, but the blue claws, I mean, that's where we're gonna get the majority of flavor for our sauces from the blue claws. But the meat of a blue claw is really special. It's, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Last night in Panama City, Brooke and I went to check the crab traps and there was a big crab outside of a trap and wasn't going in. And she said, hold my phone, I'm gonna go grab a net. And she grabbed a net and I held her phone. I shined the light on the crab and she netted them. And she, it was like a prize. We were mm -hmm. so happy, it was so, it was fun. Well, 
Gabby didn't get to come to Panama City with us. And the whole time I was like, all right, I need to have enough crabs so everyone can have one. That night, no one else wanted to go to the dock except for me and my mom. And I kept wanting the boys to go with me. And I was like, we don't need the boys. <laughs> and we went down there and caught another one. I was like, yes, now we can have our dinner. So I'm glad Gabby can come and have it with us. I'm glad you guys got some for me. <laughs> Serve my crabs in size. I give the smallest first, then the mediums, and I save the biggest chunks for last. So I put these in last. So everybody will get one of these with their last serving. the last big chunks coming out. Look at all that meat. Holy smokes. That's a lot of meat. I didn't really leave them in that long. They're already cooked. We just warm them up in the sauce. Maybe five minutes. That's half of a leg. You know, blue crabs we just had right before this and they're delicious. I love blue crabs. I would never pass them off. But when you get a nice king crab like that, with minimal effort, you can't pass that up either. It's delicious. Blue crabs and king crabs are very different things. Both of them are absolutely delicious. Blue crabs take a little more work to get the meat out of, but king crabs, easier to eat, but both are very delicious crabs in their own way. I love a good crab dinner, especially with the whole gang. I'm sure my mom is super proud, you know, this meal here and I'm sure she's watching us eat it and I'm sure she's proud of all of us. So thanks, bro. So after we cook the crabs in the red sauce, then we make linguine and put the linguine in the red sauce that has been flavored by all the crabs. Look at, look at this sauce. Wow. There's a lot of stuff in there. That's good. That's good? I'm gonna give you a little bit more sauce on top. There we go. Oh, that's nice. Next. Now, I'm gonna show you my secret part of the night. My special bread. Ooh, yeah, baby, look at that. Homemade garlic bread. Look at the steam coming off of that. Look at that. What are you saying over here? Well, I don't do dishes that often, I'll, I'll admit. But when I cook, I, go, I do the whole nine yards, man. I do the dishes too. So, and everything turned out good, didn't it, Brent? Yeah, it was awesome. Two thumbs up. Thank you. 